This is Special Prosecutor Larry Clayman. I'm the only lawyer ever to obtain a court ruling that a president of the United States committed a crime. For truth, for competition. As a young lawyer, I helped break up AT&T. That's why you have all your cell phones today. For sovereignty, for the republic. I'm the guy who, at Judicial Watch, which I founded, uncovered the Chinagate scandal. Millions of dollars going to the Clinton campaign, corrupting our political system. For the privacy of citizens. And I'm the only guy to have enjoined the National Security Agency from mass surveillance on hundreds of millions of Americans. Tearing it up. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. Bringing it back. We're going to take this country apart and put it back together again in the way envisioned by our founding fathers. It's not just talk. We're not just regurgitating news stories. Larry Clayman, special prosecutor, is making the news. And now, here's Larry. Welcome to this week's edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Clayman. We have another great show, as I always say, but boy, there's a lot of news out there today. And there are a lot of things that Freedom Watch and I have been doing which are pushing the ball forward. And, of course, we do it in a different way. We're not just talking about it. We're not just getting documents. We're bringing hard-hitting lawsuits, and we're about ready to set up a citizen's grand jury in Texas next month to bring these criminals to justice. And, of course, the talk this week was about security clearances, the president's removal of the security clearance of John Brennan. I'm talking about possibly removing the Syria the security clearances of James Clapper, James Comey, McCabe, Strzok, Page, Bruce Orr, Michael Hayden, Sally Yates, and others. Now, who are these people? These people have all been wrapped up in Clinton and Obama scandals. And, of course, the ultimate removal would be Obama himself. Now, let's talk about what security clearances do. They allow you to look at classified information. So you have to ask yourself the question, what do people who are no longer in government need with a security clearance? Obviously, they don't need it. But what it's really crucial to have is when you're seeking a job in the defense industry, the national security industry, the intelligence industry, and the private sector, you need that security clearance. So when you take that away, you take away the right, actually, it's not a right, a privilege of someone to get a job in those sectors. In fact, I had that come up many years ago with some of our clients. We represented FBI special agents who wanted to reveal the events leading up to 9-11. It was killed by the higher-ups at the FBI for political reasons, sometimes because the Bush family was close to the Saudi royal family and it was dealing with Saudi royal money laundering that led to the deaths of 3,000 people at the World Trade Center. Uh, It dealt with Jack Daly, who was a lieutenant commander of the Navy who flew over Puget Sound, surveilling, trawling by the Russian fleet over our nuclear submarines there. He was lazed. He revealed that to the public because the military tried to silence him under under Clinton. And in fact, uh, they tried to remove his security clearance. That would have prevented him from getting another job. So that's what the ramification is of what the president did today with regard to John Brennan. Now, we know that John Brennan was the former CIA director under Obama. Now, God only knows why Obama did that. I mean, we kind of know because Obama is half Muslim and acted like a Muslim for eight years. He still does. And it's rumored that Brennan has a prayer rug in his office, and we do know that he converted to Islam a number of years ago. Now, why do you have a CIA director who's a Muslim who converted to Islam and is rumored to have a prayer rug in his office. Now, not coincidentally, he also voted for a communist candidate for president several years ago. This guy is evil. But he's also worked with James Clapper, the director of national intelligence with Michael Hayden, who was then running the NSA, later became the director of the CIA and others, to implement a mass surveillance program which Edward Snowden revealed, and some of my whistleblower clients revealed, were surveilling the entire American public. Not just that, but Supreme Court justices, judges, prominent businessmen like Trump, yours truly, Larry Klayman, others, all of this without probable cause that a crime was being committed or there were communications with terrorists. This is the only basis upon which you can conduct surveillance in this country. And, of course, we know that... The Fourth Amendment protects that. And we also know that President Trump and his family and associates were also illegally wiretapped 
by these criminals. Well, Brennan was at the head of this. He even lied to Congress under oath because he was surveilling a Dianne Feinstein staff, if you can believe that. Dianne Feinstein, of all people, this leftist Democrat senator who was then head of the Senate Intelligence Committee. He lied. Clapper lied as director of national intelligence that there was mass surveillance. He did that under oath. They both committed perjury. So I asked this question, Mr. President, I love you. Really, I do. You're the best president in my lifetime. I think you're even exceeding Ronald Reagan. I mean, I love Ronald Reagan. When I go to the Ronald Reagan Library in Simi Valley, California, I literally tear over. But, Mr. Trump, you are a president of your time. And, yes, you're a little coarse. But you know what? What you are is minor in compared to what your adversaries are trying to do to you. They're trying to chop your head off. And it's coming not just from the Democrat establishment and the leftist press. It's coming from the Republican establishment. And sometimes it even comes from Fox News, if you can believe that, who everybody wrongly thinks is the beacon of the conservative community in terms of its voice. And here's what I'm telling you, is that be your own man. Much more is needed than just removing security clearances of John Brennan and the others. And let me tell you why some of these people who are on the list to remove security clearances also are in the line of fire of Freedom Watch and Larry Klayman and why you, President, need to take action. Bruce Orr, let's talk about Bruce Orr. I encountered Bruce Orr in the late 1990s, early 2000s, when an individual came to see me by the name of Peter Paul. You can read this about this in my book, Horrors, Why and How I Came to Fight the Establishment. You can get that on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. It won a book award, International Book Fair, a number of years ago. Uh, it's my autobiography. And, of course, I'm not talking about prostitutes that walk up and down Las Vegas Boulevard. I'm talking about politicians. I'm talking about lawyers. I'm talking about judges. And I'm talking about the media. Those are the true whores in this country, generally speaking. And there are exceptions. And Bruce Orr was implicated in this entire matter with Peter Paul because Peter Paul came to me while I was at Judicial Watch, which you know I founded, and he told us that he had put on a Hollywood tribute to Bill Clinton. Many of you probably remember that if you're old enough like me. And they had movie stars there. They were singing songs like Marilyn Monroe sang to John Kennedy when he was president. Mr. President, we love you, blah, blah, blah. He was leaving office. And this event was to raise money for Hillary Clinton's Senate campaign, because she was then leaving the White House as first lady and going to run for the Senate in New York. And Peter told us that he raised about $2 million through a company called Stan Lee Media. Peter had resurrected uh, Stan Lee, the famous creator of Spider-Man, and that was his partner. And he told us that embedded into that company was a mafia FBI dual informant by the name of Stanley Myatt much like Whitey Boulder up there in, in Boston that the FBI allowed to actually commit murders and such, as long as he was an informer for the FBI and J. Edgar Hoover, that was okay. Well, you know what? It's not okay. So Peter said, look, I know that I'm under investigation right now for alleged securities fraud. If you, Larry, and Judicial Watch will defend me, I will come forward with the proof I have that this $2 million in campaign contributions to Hillary Clinton's Senate campaign were hard money contributions. That's a crime. I have canceled checks. I have thank you notes from the Clintons. Thank you for helping Hillary uh, try to be elected U.S. Senator at the time. I have pictures with Bill Clinton hugging me and my wife. I have all these things. I can prove that they're guilty. I can prove that they've committed crimes. And I said to myself, this is the opportunity to finally put the Clintons away where they belong in the slammer. So at that time, we had a Bush Justice Department, George W. Bush, run by Attorney General John Ashcroft. So I went to the Attorney General. I actually called him on his home phone. And I said, look, we have this evidence. He turned the matter over to Michael Chertoff, head of the criminal division of the Department of Justice. And we said, we want to come forward with this stuff. And he is signed to run the investigation. You guessed it, Bruce Orr. He was head of Justice Department's Crime Task Force. And we tried to get a cooperation agreement for Peter Paul. In exchange, of course, we were agreeing to defend him 
if there were any criminal proceedings that were brought and to try to quash the current criminal proceeding because Peter wanted a cooperation agreement in exchange for the information he was going to provide. He was going to spill the beans on the Clintons and testify. And the Justice Department expressed an interest in that. But to make the long story short, Peter was indicted and not Hillary Clinton. Typical happened during a Republican establishment Bush administration. And he was picked up in Brazil. He was down there working on one of his other companies, Mondo English, by the Brazilian authorities when Peter was indicted. And as a result, he ultimately was extradited to the United States. Nothing ever happened. Bruce Orr buried that investigation like he buried the current Clinton email scandal investigation in 2016 leading up to the president, like he worked with his wife, Nellie, to get an investigation, a special counsel investigation by Robert Mueller against uh, the president to try to bring him down. He's a political hack, and he deserves much more than having a security clearance possibly removed. And that's why I say to the president, this is not enough, Mr. President. But if you're not going to do it, Freedom Watch is going to do it. We're starting citizens grand juries in Texas on September 25th of this year. We will indict Brennan. We will indict Orr. We will indict Comey. We will invite Dyke Mueller for criminal grand jury leaks against the president to destroy him. We will indict Obama. We will try them. We will convict them. We will have them sentenced. And I ask you, Mr. President, to then enforce those sentences and throw them in the slammer. And if you don't slammer, and if you don't do it, we will exercise peaceful and legal citizens' arrests. The people have a right to rise up. This is what we face now in our nation. And this is why this radio show is so important. Share it, listen to it, because I tell you the story straight up. You can't hear this on Fox News. You can't hear this. Maybe you can hear it in other networks. I know I, I do a lot of Newsmax. Newsmax is an excellent network. They allow me to say what I think. Radio America allows me to say what I think. We're going to be back shortly with what I think and what I'm going to do. In the meantime, go to freedomwatchusa.org. Sign up to support our citizens' grand juries. I'll be right back. Special Prosecutor, Very bad. Larry Clayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. I'm going to tell you more about the Peter Paul story because it's very important to understand. There are two chapters about this in my book, Whores, Why and How I Came to Fight the Establishment. After I left Judicial Watch to run for the U.S. Senate in 2003-2004 in Florida, I left Judicial Watch without having a chairman and general counsel appointed. I assumed that my colleagues who I left behind, Tom Fitton, Paul Arfanidis, and others, would fill that post with a distinguished lawyer, such as Bob Barr, who I'd recommended to become the head of that organization. Instead, Tom Fitton seized control of Judicial Watch. He's not a lawyer. At the time I left, he hadn't even graduated from college. In fact, he had lied to me and said he had graduated when I hired him. I'm not picking on Tom Fitton, but let me tell you what happened here, because the facts speak for themselves. And frankly, it's appalling. In fact, it's more than appalling. It's, it's outrageous. After I left Judicial Watch, Fitton dishonored the agreement to defend Peter Paul. And as a result, in large part, Peter Paul did not have an adequate criminal defense in his criminal proceeding, and he wound up doing 10 years in prison. Can you think of anything worse than that? This speaks to the character of Tom Fitton. So what, some of you who have questioned why I'm, quote, attacking Tom Fitton, I'm not attacking him. Let me tell you one other thing. When I left Judicial Watch, there was $1.4 million in the bank to buy a building, which with my name on it, we had attempted to raise the money because we wanted to buy the building we were in. Various donors, donors signed legacy rights to have their names on offices, including my surrogate mother and others. And many of these people have since died since I left Judicial Watch, which was about 15 to 16 years ago. Instead of buying a building, Judicial Watch just pocketed the money. It's still in its account. Never bought a building, rented office space. And many of these people are now dead that thought they were going to have their legacy honored by Judicial Watch. 
that was fitting again. So any of you who question my criticism, you know, this is the reason why, and there's a lot more behind that. And also with regard to telling the truth in media, I love Newsmax. I love Radio America. I'm on Newsmax frequently, but you'll never hear what I'm saying on Fox News. I'm talking about affirmative action here. I'm talking about citizens' grand juries. I can say that on Newsmax. I can say that on Radio America. Here's what the American people are going to do to rise up. I'm tired of the hype. I'm tired of boosting ratings, of increasing advertising dollars for networks. I want results, and I want them to be able to say what I think. And that's why in the next segment of this show, we're going to have Floyd Brown on. He's the owner of Western Journalism Center. He's a real pioneer with regard to the conservative movement. I work with Floyd and others during the Clinton years to have Clinton impeached. He's a real patriot, and he's, he's courageous. And he's going to tell you from personal experience what social media has been doing to his companies and doing to the rest of the conservative movement. And he knows it technologically. I'm not actually technologically inclined. Floyd is. He's owned radio stations. He's owned all kinds of things. So I want you to hear from that. But here's the other thing. And this is why the alternative media in the conservative movement is important beyond Fox News, whether it's Radio America or whether it's Alex Jones or whether it's other uh, social media or networks, is because you need to hear the other side of the story. You know, Alex also lets me say what I think. And Alex is being trashed on Fox News these days, just like they trashed Clive and Bundy and Ryan Bundy that ran away from him, just like they trashed Roy Moore, just like they're now trashing Judge, excuse me, Sheriff Arpaio. He's been banned from the network, or Tom McInerney, because he made a remark about McCain, frankly, who is a very unpatriotic individual. That's why you need to listen to this show and share it because here you're hearing the truth. You're hearing exactly what's going on out there and we're coming up with solutions for what's going on. For instance, we're moving ahead with our case with Antifa. We have a hearing on September 4th to try to have them silenced. We have a default against DeRay McKesson, the head of BLM in Dallas. We have a hearing to set damages for the massacre of Dallas police officers on September 7th, we are moving ahead. We are doing things, and we're not sugarcoating it to boost ratings. We're talking about what needs to be done right now, and we don't care who we offend. We're telling the truth. So go to freedomwatchusa.org, freedomwatchusa.org, R-R-G. Contribute to our cause. Sign up for our Freedom Watch Justice League. Join our citizens' grand juries. Support our other cases. I'm going to be right back with Floyd Brown. Floyd tells it like it is as well, and you'll enjoy listening to him and the crisis with regard to social media and conservatives right now who are being censored. I'll be right back. And now... Four words that make corrupt politicians make wee-wee in their little pants. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this president. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Special Prosecutor Larry Klayman. Be the one who makes our country great again. Go to FreedomWatchUSA.org and donate. I'm back with Floyd Brown. He's the publisher of Western Journal. He's an old friend. He's a patriot. He's someone who stands up for what's right. He and I fought the Clintons during the 1990s when I was at Judicial Watch, and he was running various organizations, including Western Journalism Center and others. And he is someone who really understands what's going on in the social media because Floyd has been a part of the media for a long time. Of course, I am too, but Floyd has actually run media companies And I wanted him to go through what's been going on with Facebook, with regard to Apple, Twitter, YouTube, and others. And, of course, we know that Alex Jones has effectively been banned from these social media outlets. He'll be back, I'm sure. The president tweeted this morning. The president's weighing in. He's criticizing. In effect, he's he's threatening some of these social media companies, uh, like I've just mentioned. And But we want to see what it is that actually can be done here because I believe that his antitrust division can play a role of the Justice Department. Of course, with uh, Jeff Sessions there, I mean, don't hold your breath. 
And that's, just, that's why we at Freedom Watch and Larry Klayman individually are trying to do things that can try to resolve this situation because we need an outlet to be able to educate the American people on conservative principles and principles of faith. Libertarians are being shut out. I mean, even this morning, Prager University, and I wouldn't exactly call Prager University that conservative. Uh, apparently, uh, an ad by Ben Shapiro and George Will, of all people, was taken off Facebook. Now, these, these people are never Trumpers, okay? So if they're going to take Ben Shapiro and Will off of Facebook, just think what is in store for the rest of us true conservatives. So anyway, I want to introduce you to Floyd. You've been, he's been on the show before. Uh, he's my great friend, and I admire him a great deal. Back with you, and you have touched on something that is near and dear to my heart. Not because I'm a conservative, uh, not because I'm a Trump supporter. It's because I'm a supporter of the First Amendment of the Constitution. This all has to do with us being able to vindicate our free speech rights. And you know, the truth is, is censorship is bad no matter who does it. These may be private companies, Facebook, Google, Apple, Amazon, what have you. They may be private companies, but they don't have a right to take away the First Amendment rights of the people using their platforms. And uh, the truth is, is they have decided from on high, from their very big companies that have incredibly um, a huge market penetration and market dominance in their particular uh, areas, whether it's you know smartphones with Apple or whether it's social media with Facebook or whether it's online video with YouTube, whether it's search with Google, uh, they have such an incredibly strong dominant market position that um, they cannot be allowed to strip average Americans of their free speech rights, and that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, and it, it, I'm glad the president is speaking out about it because they've actually uh, – we've been doing a lot of studies on Facebook in particular because that's our area of expertise. At westernjournal.com, we have about 40 million Facebook followers. And that's a very big uh, Facebook audience. And, you know, last October, Facebook decided, hey, we don't care that people have followed your page or that they want to follow your issues. Uh, we're going to give them the news and information we want to give them, not the news and information they want to receive. And uh, so um, – Part of that, when they did that, was they actually cut the president of the United States access to his own Facebook followers by over 40 percent. And uh, they've done this routinely to members of Congress, to members of the U.S. Senate. Uh, and it's all an attempt on the part of these very liberal companies to control the debate, to limit the debate, to keep debate in uh, really the confines of what they consider to be acceptable. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it's wrong what they're doing, um, but they're using, you know, very, very um, sophisticated technology to do it. But in the end, it's just old fashioned censorship. You know, uh, it's interesting. Google right now is working with the Chinese government uh, to develop a a perfectly censored uh, Google search engine in China so that the search results that come back when you go to Google in China will be only what the communist masters of China want you to see and hear. And uh, that technology that's been perfected with Red China, it, it looks like they've decided to implement it here. Only rather than the Chinese overlords and masters, it's going to be the Google overlords and masters and the people in Silicon Valley that want to control our minds, Larry. Our minds well, yes, couple, couple that, Floyd, with mass surveillance of the American people, which I don't believe is stopped, although I got two injunctions against the NSA. And, of course, Brennan and Clapper were behind this. Ironically, we're talking about security clearances in the first part of the show. I said, that's not enough. They need to be prosecuted. And we're going to do that at Freedom Watch if Sessions won't do it. And clearly he won't do it uh, through our citizens' grand juries. But uh, couple that with the 
ability of these huge social media companies to shape the minds of people by feeding them only leftist, leftist, socialist, atheist, pro-illegal immigrant, pro-radical feminist, pro-Islam, radical Islam, and all kinds of other stuff out there, anti-Israel, anti-Judeo-Christian theology and ethics. Uh, Couple that with that. And what we have here is an Orwellian state. Uh, We have a dictatorship. And and one other thing I want to mention here, uh, Floyd, I want to get your views on this, is that, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't the government, our so-called government, develop the Internet? Didn't they pay for the Internet? Yeah, Uh, actually, yeah, it was it was it was developed by DARPA uh, and the Pentagon, really, uh, for uh, distributed communications during times of war or times of of uh, you know when the conventional communications networks might be down as a result of a war. And so, uh, yes, that's how the internet was developed. And uh, in fact. Uh, uh, th- both Google and Facebook have benefited uh, in the past from very large uh, U.S. government contracts and uh, co-locating at U.S. government data centers. So both of those companies have vi- have had in the past, at least, a very cozy relationship with the U.S. government. Uh, Google is changing somewhat because you know this last year uh, they were they were going to renew a lot of their defense contracts, and uh, they had such an uproar with their uh, millennial employees that they would actually be working with the U.S. government. Uh, They turned down a major contract. Isn't it ironic that why they won't work with the U.S. government, they're more than happy to work with the red Chinese and the communists that control Asia? Well, my point as well is, is that the government has an asset that they're benefiting from, paid for it. So I think there's a legal case to be made that they have to provide equal access to everybody, given the fact that they are profiting from a government asset and something that was developed with taxpayer money here, which they're now using. There's also an antitrust side of this. I'm a former antitrust lawyer. I'm still an antitrust lawyer, but I was with the antitrust division, as you know, Floyd, of the U.S. Department of Justice. I was on the trial team that broke up AT&T, its monopoly. And largely that monopoly was broken up because – There was no competition, and it was not giving everybody access to AT&T services uh, and equipment. And that's very similar to what's going on now with these social media companies. And I believe that they're conspiring or they're acting in parallel. You know, you can have a price-fixing case under the antitrust law under Sherman 1, that act, that antitrust law, if there's parallel pricing, if you can show that, that everybody's following everybody else. And even if there isn't an agreement, I believe that Facebook, Twitter, Apple, YouTube, um, and others are, in fact, acting in parallel to discriminate against conservative voices, libertarian voices, people of faith, and that kind of thing. Well, well you can see it when they, when, they, when they all ban a particular u- user in one week. It's, uh, it, it's pretty obvious that there's collusion uh, or cooperation, or some kind of of, uh, of uh, working together. I mean, it, it, even if it isn't, it, even if it's just they're reading the newspaper and colluding through the newspaper, uh, it's pretty obvious that they're working together. But I, I think, uh, in terms of antitrust, Larry, I mean, one of the problems is you know you look at a company like. Um, Let's let's take uh, Google and search. Okay, there are no effective competitors, uh, and so when you when you have that kind of uh, dominant market position, Google has repeatedly um, abused that power. Uh, for example, uh, they were they you know there used to be a lot of different. Um, uh, Information websites that that would you that would would optimize to the Google uh, search engine, and then Google basically would come in from time to time and and in essence replicate their businesses. Uh, for example, Google's gone into things like Google Flight, for example, and uh, uh, and Google uh, has an app now for trips and for for hotels and for 
selling all of these travel related services well these it, traditionally were all all of these travel related companies were were using Google to to find customers but Google has used that dominant position and all of the market knowledge that they gained from watching those different companies over time and they've used that market position in order to give themselves dominance they've done it uh, in shopping they've done it in market after market where they have stepped in and literally taken over for markets because of their dominant position in information and knowledge through the search engine. And it's interesting. I believe that the concept of abuse of a dominant position exists under American antitrust law, but it's very clear under European antitrust law of the European Union. I, in fact, was a stagiaire or an intern many years ago in the competition directorate of the European Union. And they're not perfect either. They love going after American companies in particular, but they have fined Google, Apple, and others to a great extent because under their law, they've abused that dominant position. So perhaps the Europeans in this respect are way ahead of us in their thinking. Uh, And that's something that we need to remedy here. And again, the people need to do it. I mean, we need to react ourselves. The president can issue tweets, but he's powerless without the Justice Department's antitrust division taking action, well, you, and I don't think that under Sessions that's going to happen. I yeah, want to get well, your you thoughts. Know, what's, what's, what, 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 one last thing, Larry. I, I've watched, you know, a number of these dystopian movies over the years, and and uh, um, one of them that comes to mind is the, the, the movie Blade Runner, which starred Harrison Ford many years ago. And in that movie, it was a huge corporation that became the dominant tyrant of that uh, police state. It wasn't the government. And these companies are so unbelievably powerful that I would say in some ways they're even more powerful than the U.S. government. Well, that's why I say couple that with mass surveillance by the CIA, NSA, and FBI. And what you've got is a dictatorship. And, you know, it was – I don't want to go too far with this analogy, but Nazi Germany was able to be created and – almost succeed in taking over the world because of the German industrial companies, including BMW, uh, Deutsche Bank, and others. So, yes, the power of corporations, if misused, can be devastating to democracy and freedom. I want to thank you, Floyd, for everything you do, for being my friend, and for explaining to the American people what's at stake here, because this is a truly significant issue that could jeopardize our continued existence as a free republic. I'll be right back with the verdict section of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. Before he was a trial lawyer... He sliced him and diced him. People used to ask me, Larry, what caused you to start Judicial Watch and now Freedom Watch, given the powerful forces in this country that put you at risk? In a meat packing plant. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. A very special prosecutor, Larry Clayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. I'm back with the verdict on special prosecutor with Larry Clayman. What we see today is in effect a civil war between the left and the right. And of course, we're right and they're wrong. It's getting so bad. There's violence in the streets. Freedom Watch has a case up in Oakland, California, for a young woman who was attacked during the planned speech of Milo, a commentator on Breitbart at the time. She was attacked by Antifa. She was pepper sprayed. Her eyes were damaged with Flashlights being shined in them. She was scared to death. That case is going forward. We're holding Antifa accountable. And we're holding the city of Berkeley accountable, the police, and the regents of the California system, including Janet Napolitano, who sits on top of that. Now, we know that even recently, the judge in the case in Virginia, T.S. Ellis, that's handling the Manafort case, he's been fre- threatened. He said that yesterday. He's got marshals protecting him. I know going back to the 1990s, Judge Royce Lambert made so many good decisions 
for Judicial Watch when I was running it, he was threatened. He would go out with, with marshals. I was there with him when we were going to visit a facility that was involved in covering up the first Clinton email scandal. So this is the world we live in today. And this is why this radio show and our website, freedomwatchusa.org, and our legal cases, our citizens' grand juries, which we're starting in Texas on September 25th, need to be supported because we are unique. We are your people's justice department. You don't have another one. We don't just get documents. We bring hard-hitting cases. And let me clarify one other thing, and I hope that you'll take action on this. I was talking about how Tom Fitton abandoned Peter Paul after I left Judicial Watch to run for the U.S. Senate. I was talking about how Judicial Watch pocketed $1.4 million, never bought a building a decade and a half later. I urge you to contact Judicial Watch and say, use that money for the reasons that it was donated. Don't misappropriate that money. And when you have money for 15 years, (laughs) that raises a strong presumption of misappropriation of what was done with that money. But what is even more tragic is that there were elderly people. The average age of a contributor to Judicial Watch is about 74 years old, also to Freedom Watch, because older people, frankly, have a greater sense of ethics than the younger generation, the Me Too generation. And many of them purchased benefits with Judicial Watch. They have their names put on offices, conference rooms, all kinds of other things. They're dead, and they never got that. That was, in effect, a theft. And this is what is so unique. And so that's why I wanted to explain why I'm so tough on Fit and, and Judicial Watch, because they're not ethical. They have not behaved in a legal manner, in my view. And this is something that needs to be said. And let me also say why I've been tough on Fox News, because, you know, you got the Bundys, okay? Cliven made one comment uh, about African-Americans. He called them Negroes, and he was equating his plight to the Negro in the Old South, And he didn't mean any harm. In fact, when he was in prison for two years unjustly, the African-Americans loved him. And he was not a racist bone in his body. But Fox abandoned him when that happened. Fox abandoned Chief Justice Roy Moore in Alabama. He didn't sexually abuse any women. Yeah, there are people like Harvey Weinstein who have, but Judge Moore didn't do that. Hannity abandoned him. Sheriff Arpaio, after he was wrongly convicted of a misdemeanor, They ran away from him. He can't even come on the air now and talk about his Senate campaign in Arizona. In fact, other people are coming on. Martha McSally and the other one, Kelly Ward. But Arpaio's not on there. Fox is a fair weather friend. And I'm not allowed to come on there and say what I really think about Obama and his Muslim background or what we need to do by taking action with citizens' grand juries. That's censored. Now, I have a long history with Fox. And that's why I'm on Newsmax all the time. That's why I'm on this station all the time and other stations. I'm not excluded from any other network. But yet I can't say what I really believe on Fox News because it's censored. It's run by the liberal Murdoch brothers. Don't be fooled. It's a fair weather friend. So we're going to be back next week with another edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klain. But in the meantime, Freedom Watch is moving forward with its citizens' grand juries. It's other hard-hitting cases, including a wrongful death case against Hillary Clinton for what happened at Benghazi, including cases against Antifa, Black Lives Matter, Louis Farrakhan. We are your Justice Department. So go to freedomwatchusa.org. Support us. We need your strong financial tax-deductible contributions to be your Justice Department. God bless you. God bless your family. God bless America. And God save America during these very trying and dire times. 